start on the second position. Uh, just make sure uh, that you don't overdo the, the ornament. The ornament is just a G coming down to an F sharp, right? Uh, another thing that you have to really be careful with is making sure that you play on the end of four, not on four or on one in the next beat, right? So you're holding on one, two, three, four, and, right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and try and play through this. Ready and set, slowly, one, two, three, four. measure 16 and then on measure uh, 17 we start on C now let's actually just go straight into 17 17 you're going to be on fifth position right so it that one beat rest gives you a chance to reset get yourself in fifth position and here you go and one two three four one right so make sure that you have that B with two and pinky grabs the high C uh, Then we go on to C. Then we move on to C. On C, the fact that you have that one beat rest gives you a chance to reset your position on fifth position. You're going to then move over to seventh position, right? Three, four, one. measure 20 right so you start on let's just say we start on the on the third beat of the previous measure this is measure 19 one two three four get set up on fifth position the pinky plays the C carries you over to the A then you actually have to wait for the next beat the end of the next beat right so one and two three right a little tricky to do this all on the second string Three hammer to four, pull back to three, and then one. Then up to the third string, pinky stacks right below it for the F sharp, tuck out, one on the second string for the E, then three for the D, right? So now putting it all together, right on C, and one, two, three, four, one. All right, what happened here, let's take a look at the change, the shift, right? On measure 21, you're in fifth position, three and four are stacked, third string, second string, D, F, tuck out, one, three, right? Two, three. Then on ninth position, karate chop position, right? Your hand against the body of the, uh, of the guitar. Right? Four, two, one, except that you have that mordent, mordente, that, that biting ornament. Bite on, bite off. Right? Hammer, pull off. Four, two, one, and then again, Gabriel has been very kind to the players. Four, two, one on the second string, right? Cannot be simpler except the fact for the fact that we have those mordents. First one is two to four mordent. then one to two mordant, right? And then open E. If you want to keep everything on the closed positions, you would just do a bar and get the E right there in the third string. Everything fits in that bar. No necessity for a bar. After that, you get yourself over to second position, 
two, three, four. Watch out, six beats in the next measure, right? So there, uh, and the other guitar parts are going to count on your weight in those six beats. So you better count, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Tie, two, three, four. At this point, we find ourselves doing a very Brazilian rhythm, right? So there's quite a bit of syncopation. You're always playing on the last beat of the, uh, the, the last beat of the group of 16th notes. So one E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A, right? On beats one, three, and four, you play on the first beat and on the last beat. One E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A, one E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A. Now, when it comes to the second beat, it's coincidence that on the second beat, you don't play on the first sixteenth of the of, of the beat, you play on the second. One E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A, one E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A. One, two. And this is going to come back later on on F sharp. Now, a little bit of a change in the rhythm. We have this very fun chords that the composer that uh, that Gabriel is, is Gabriel, sorry, is playing around with. So it's right B, F sharp, D in the second string, right? Then your next chord is the same except that your bass has changed, just an E bass. And then you have F sharp and A, and then it's just the, or actually G and A, right? So first chord, E, right? So you could actually just play those chords, and another guitar part actually does play them. Very pretty, right? You actually have a very fun part that moves along, right? It works in syncopation. So again, we're counting. This time you play the first, third, and fourth of the sixteenth of, of, of the beat. So one E, right? Now, on the second beat. what happened before right so this time you're playing on the first 16th the third and fourth that ties over so you don't play on the first 16th of the second beat you play on the second 16th and of course you play on the last one right then you actually borrow the same rhythm and apply it to the very next chord which if you recall was the same thing but with e bass Then one and two, right? At the very end, right, the great composers don't do three things the same, th uh, four times the same thing, right? So by a third time, you're already thinking of what you're going to do next. And that's the case with Gabriel, right? He's a great composer. So he's just going to say, I'm gonna change it a little bit on the last one, right? So. Things. The second time around, uh, I did not do it. Uh, he just added 
kind of a power chord, right? You know, like uh, so. But you're just playing the same thing, the same chord, except that you don't play just the fifth string. You play both the fifth string and the first string. Right, so it's not. This time, a double, uh, double plug together. Aim at landing on the third string. You really don't play the third string, but. are going to change right you're going to not have the same basses anymore in the case of the first bass you are going to turn that into an open a makes it easier right right then you have a b flat right in order to do that b flat we're not doing this formation one two three it's better to use three and four and the first chord it really doesn't matter. You could actually, if you wanted to, stay here. But I recommend switching it over, right? Right, because you really don't have a bass there for one. It's just open A bass. Then you have a B flat, and then you have an F natural, not F sharp. Right, A and C sharp. I'm talking about measure forty nine. Right, and then we move on to 50. It's just as matter and as easy as grabbing D and A. Right, you could grab that with one. I recommend that you do this with two, and the reason is coming up. So one E and a two. So it's it's an arpeggio. So one E and a. Right. So right. One E and a two E and a one E and. So what happens here? You are coming on measure 51. You play, you, you're holding on from before, right? One E and A, ah, pull off the two to a one, play the third string. Then the third finger grabs the F sharp on a D string and then pulls it off to get a D. So let's do it a little bit faster so that we are closer to the tempo that we're playing it with the ensemble. On the F, Komoto, ready, and... One. Right. This last time I actually played them as they were written. So you got a measure, what is it, 60? 59, you're carrying over from before, right? So this is the last beat of uh, 68, 4, 1, 2, 3, right? I use one for for here. You, you could but immediately shift the 2 to a 1. Then you go back to second position. A little bit of uh, busier chords on section G. You're carrying on with long held notes. You got F sharp, you got D, then jet over in 70, uh, 70, what, 74, and jet over to fourth position, right? Right, you got an, well, in, in uh, uh, the D is on the second fret, fifth string. Then you have an F sharp, your pinky grabs a C sharp, and your B is open. Two, three, four. You could say say that he's setting you up for the for the chord, right? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right, and then on uh, eighty-two, it's just a matter of saying one, two, three, four. So on the right hand, you're just going from the fifth, fourth, thirds, uh, and second strings. 
and then you're moving over to the first three strings. So one, two, three, four. Right? Uh, and then again, the same thing on the next measure, right? F sharp, twice. Four. And then remember I told you earlier that that rhythm that we did on the A's, where you were playing on the first 16th, four sixteenth and on the next beat on the second beat you play on the second sixteenth of course on the four sixteenth third and fourth beats first and four sixteenth uh, that comes back on H on F sharp right so you got one this you're in fifth position uh, this is measure 91 to the I territory. I tends to be a little bit more difficult for just about all the parts. Here, you're looking at just a, a, a bar chord, two is grabbing the C and three is grabbing the D, right? right? Then you move things over a little bit with your fingers, right? The bar stays where it was, right? And then you're employing just about all the strings except for the sixth. Right, so second finger there on the C sharp. In the bar is the one grabbing the E, the B is on the third string, fourth fret, same fret for the D sharp, and the F sharp is in the, in the first fret, right in the bar. Right? And then you're going to keep your third finger there where it is and lower your bar. It makes it very easy for the chord on the downbeat of 100, right? Right? And then you move the third finger over back one fret and set up your next chord, right. a D sharp. So you were here, right? So I'm going to recount the chords. Measure 99. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then you, you're back on a bar. And this is a chord that he really tends to enjoy in his, in his music. Very important, not so much to focus on the bar, but to focus on setting up two on the D and your pinky, right? And then you land your bar. Fairly easy if you think about what fingers are extant beyond the bar, right? It's only two or four, right? And then he's going to bring you over to the kind of almost everything stacked up on the second uh, second fret. So sixth string, third string, second string, right? Right. Very beautiful lush chords. Then one and two are in the second fret, third string, first string. So that's the downbeat of what? 9900, one, 1 or 2. Right? And then you're kind of doing the same thing that you did over here, but you're now your second finger is on the sixth string, right? Right? Just about another version of the same thing. Right? So, sixth string this time. Recounting all the way to I. 1, 2, 3, 4. Move over. Two and four, all lined up. One and two and three, just like before, but on the sixth string. And then you're going to do the same thing with one and four that we did before. Your bass is going to be just the A bass, right? And then he's going to give you on measure one or three. Some of you might be able to do it. I am not. He's asking that you do a two finger, uh, a two string second finger bar while you're holding also a bar, a regular bar, right? So you got the A sharp and the G sharp in your index bar, and then on your second finger bar, you got your C sharp and your F sharp, right? That is extremely difficult for me. I personally would just do something like this, or I would even more blasphemously do. So one for the A sharp, two for the G sharp, 
ready for the C sharp and your pinky right there. Right? And then that sets you up to move over. Right? It's almost exactly what we did over here. Right, with the F sharp, but this time it's just a B7 with the B in the mute. Right? And then like I told you, he really likes that 2-4 combination with the bar, right? Right? This is the second half of 104. And then 104, 105 is very interesting. The cool thing is that we have 4 already in place on the D string. 2 moves up to the G string for the A sharp. 3 grabs the 6th string for the G sharp. And your first finger grabs the 1st string. Right? So you're skipping the fifth string. This is again the downbeat of 105, right? And then back to this uh, famous chord, right? This time your bass is on the fifth string. And of course, because he likes this so much, one more time, right? That's the, 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 and, and of course, this happens rather quickly. Right? Then the B7 chord. B7-ish, right? And then this is the very second chord that we did, right? With the bar two, three, and four. And then you just move your second finger to for the grand finale in a seven, four measure, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So C sharp, C natural. So very slowly, I'm gonna just take you through all the chords. One, two, start on I. And two, keep three, flip back over, two and four and bar. We'll end up on two, one and two plus three, then all line up like before, and two. right? Again, like two, four, the painful chord. Painful chord again with E bass. Go through each one of the chords uh, slowly. I'm probably going to chart each, each one of these chords out and include them in the video tutorial. At the very end, he brings the, the theme to just close everything up. Be mindful of the, the C sharp that we get this time, right? So because of the, the movement of the harmony, is no longer a C natural, but a C sharp. Uh, the espresivo, very beautiful. We might play around a little bit with timing here. Okay? Three, four. has a fermata so we're going to let it ring right okay enjoy this piece it's very beautiful uh lots of twists and turns around and uh, great rhythm as we would expect such a great composer like Gabriel to work for us have fun <laughs>